Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So you know what? I heard from one of my subscribers last week and she said, Lisa, you haven't done any sewing projects in a while. And you know what? I've been working on a few. So I decided to move this one up in the, um, in the calendar and put it on for today's Inspiration Friday. So my husband finally retired and he decided to clean out his closet and he didn't need all of his dress shirts. So what do you do? Take him to Goodwill, right? But wait, I've got a great project that you can take men's dress shirts, which I have a whole bunch of them now, and you can make aprons. I can't wait to show you how to upcycle a shirt. And you guys, if you have got a shirt at your house, this project is going to cost you next to nothing. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm going to join you over at my pressing table and we're going to get working on this project. But first, before you go, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I so appreciate it. Click on the subscribe button and click on that bell and YouTube will alert you each time I upload a new video. We try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. And hey, if you're one of my faithful followers, thank you so much. And just like one of my other subscribers had said, asking for a sewing project, leave a comment down below if you're looking for some type of project. I love hearing from my followers. So give me a second. I'm going to get that camera angle change and we are going to get sewing today. Okay, so let's get going on this project. So to make these shirt aprons, we don't need a whole lot, you guys. And if you guys are lucky enough to have a husband or a dad where maybe you can go in and raid their closet, the main item that we're going to need for this project is a men's, men's shirt. Now, I grabbed these from my husband. And this is an extra large shirt. Um, so depending on the size of apron will be the size of shirt you want to use. Now I would also say that Goodwill or a thrift store is another great idea um, for this type of project. The other things you guys are going to need is some type of ruler. A tape measure would work too. So if you want to use a tape measure, I just really love to use my ruler. Along with a pair of scissors either some pins or some clips. You guys, if you've watched any of my sewing ones before, you guys will know that I love my clips. We're gonna need some thread with some bobbin, and then I like to use a sewing marking pen, um, and this is the type that um, disappears when you iron. And then the other thing you're gonna want is you're gonna wanna have your iron ready to go. So I've got my iron already all heated up and I've just got it off to the side off of camera view a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to get started on this project. And we are just going to get going. So the very first thing I like to do is I like to open up my shirt. And so I'm going to open it up. And one of the things that I like to do that I find makes it a little bit easier to start this process is to button up my shirt. And so I'm going to go ahead and button um, up. And then what I like to do, this one's pressed pretty good, but the other thing I like to do is I like to give this front um, area a good press. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to cut off the arms after we give it a press. So let's do that first step first. And I'm going to give it a good press. And I just want to get in between the buttons. I've found that on some of the shirts when I've made these, um, that this area is just a little bit wrinkled and it just makes it nicer. And so one thing you want to think about when you're looking at shirts you want to use is you want to really concentrate on what the front of the shirt looks like because that's what we're mainly going to be using. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to where the sleeve is and we're just going to cut it off. And I like to go right next to the seam. 
and I'll hold this up as soon as I cut it for you guys so you guys can see and um, you guys can see I've got the seam there and all we did is cut it off easy as that now we're going to move to the other side and I'm going to cut it off also no reason to worry about getting it exact because most of this area is going to be cut away anyway so we've got some extra material here now you guys could use the sleeves as your ties i like to use the back of the shirt but this is definitely some leftover material so now what we have is we have got a shirt with no sleeves so what we're going to do now and i'm going to work on one side so you guys can see this i've got the collar opened up because what i want to see and i'm just going to give it a quick little press here what i want to see is where that um, shoulder seam is and we want to go on a diagonal down from that what i like to do is look at where when you do it as a diagonal, you want it to come up next to where your sleeve was cut off, and then we're gonna continue down. So I'm just gonna make a line, and I like to use this pen just because that gives me a good cutting line. And there we have it. Now, before I do that cut, one step that I jumped ahead of the game was I didn't cut my up my side seams so what we want to do is we want to cut right up our side seams okay so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna go right next to the seam there because i like to hem this side seam at the same time i hem um, the piece that's going up to the neck so i'm just going to cut that and get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and cut that other side too. That all cut. And then the only thing that the back is hooked by now is where it is um, from up to the collar. So now we did our line, okay, and we'll just remeasure that just to make sure everybody saw that. I went up to where the shoulder seam is hitting the collar. I used my ruler to come down past where the arm is and just continue on down. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut along that line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop right at where we're at the collar. So I've got this excess right there. Then what I want to do, now you could do the exact same type measurement over on the other side but what I like to do is I like to fold over my shirt. I got the collar, you gotta turn inside out to be able to do this. But I like to fold it over, and then this way I make sure that I have the same cut on both sides. Now you could definitely measure it if you want, you guys. I just find that this works out really nice. So I'm matching up my collar point. I'm matching up where my sleeve is. I'm going to continue on down. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut right along that line again. That way I know that I have got the same type cut on both sides. So now what we're going to do is open up the shirt and now the last step of cutting this all apart is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut right next to where that collar is. So right next to it, I'm just going to cut along there and that's going to totally remove the back. And I like to leave that seam there that is there from the collar. The back we're going to use in a little while for our tags but right now this is what we've got you guys we've got the makings of our apron how cute is that already so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my iron and I'm gonna flip my my um, apron um, so the wrong sides are facing up 
and I'm going to give it a good press. Now we've got the hem at the bottom of the shirt and we're going to keep that intact. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just with my fingers, I'm going to roll over just about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to go up all the way along. So that's the side, right? And now I'm going to come up towards the neck. Same thing. So all I'm doing right now is I'm pressing this to give it a finished look. So we want this to look really nice. So I did it one turn, and now I want to do a second turn. So that way it's all going to be all just really nice and complete. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on the um, other side too. So we'll have both sides all done. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take it over to the sewing machine. And at the sewing machine, I am going to top stitch this. So I just want you guys to see that up close, just how I've got that folded over, okay? So on the other side, it just looks really nice and finished. So I'll go ahead and I'll zip through this really quick, do this other side so you guys can see it also. And then we'll hop over to the sewing machine and we'll do up these sides. So we're going to go ahead and start, and I'm going to do a quarter inch seam with my sewing machine. So I'm going to do a straight stitch just a little bit, and then I'm going to do a back stitch. And then I'm just going to do a quarter inch all the way along here. Now I want to show you when I get to the corner here. Really important when you get to the corner, this is just a little trick I like to use, is I'm coming right up to the corner and then I'm sinking my needle. See how my needle is down? I'm gonna raise my presser foot up and then I'm just gonna change the direction of the material. Put my presser foot back down and then I'm just gonna carry on with that stitch. And I come up right by where the neck is at. And I'm just going to finish it off. I'm going to do a little back stitch. And then with my machine, I've got automatic cutters, which I just absolutely love. And I'm going to cut it, and we are going to be all set. So there is my finished seam along there. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. And then I'm going to meet you back over at the cutting table, and we are going to start working on the ties. Okay, so we're back from the sewing machine and we've got all of our seams done. So what we're going to do now is we are going to set this off to the side. And what we're going to start working on is the, um, the back of the shirt we're going to use to do our ties. I'm also going to use the back for some optional um, pockets, but first we're going to do the ties. So one of the things I like to do again is give it a press. Now you guys could have definitely done a full press of the shirt when you started. But one thing with the ties that I like to do is I like to take advantage of using the bottom of the hem of the shirt um, for my tie. It just saves a step on having to hem um, the end of your tie. So what I'm going to do, and you guys aren't going to be able to see this completely with my camera angle, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to use my pen. And what I want to do is I like to do a 17 inch. Now my ruler is 18 inches and I like to do a 17 inch um, tie. Now you guys might find that you want longer ties or you want shorter ties. But basically what I want to show you guys here is I want to take advantage of the hem of my shirt, okay? So I'm going to come down and 
it's going to be okay if I'm not quite exactly. Um, this is kind of at a little bit of an angle, and that's going to be perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bring it over. My ruler is three inches. I like to do my ties two inches by 17 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my first line. And luckily, you guys, I have got a shirt that has got lines on it. So it's pretty easy to see. Now, you guys could definitely be doing this on a cutting mat and using your rotary blade. But Lisa is on her ironing pad. And so, of course, I am not going to be using my rotary blade on my ironing pad. So I'm just going to mark these so I can grab my scissors and I can cut this. Definitely use your um, rotary blade if you guys want. So I'm just measuring these out and I love using my quilting rulers because it just really helps with the whole process. So now that might be kind of hard for you guys to see, but I can see it very clearly here and I'm going to just cut both of my ties out. Again, it's really nice because I have got a shirt that has got lines on it. So I'm just kind of staying with those lines as I'm doing it. My husband seemed to have a lot of shirts that um, had some type of directional um, line to it. Um, and so as I've been making these, um, I definitely have a lot that are checked or striped. A few that are plain colors. But one of the fun things I'm doing is... I am going to be making a bunch of these for my craft room. So when I have friends over to craft, I have got aprons that are right, um, ready accessible to use um, for them as we're crafting. Now, the other fun thing I thought with these aprons is they would be a great gift come with the holidays. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I do a lot of cooking um, in the kitchen on the holidays and so that's always another fun thing to have these aprons available. Now what we're going to do with this step is we're going to fold the strap in half and I kind of call this the bias method. I don't know if that is truly a method but bias tape is something that you can definitely buy in the stores. Okay and so basically what we're going to do is we're going to be making our own bias tape. I like to press it in half so, so you can see I have a nice seam there or a press and then I'm going to fold it in half and fold it in half right into that middle seam and then I'm going to fold it like that. So basically you're folding each of your edges into that seam okay, and then you're going to fold the, both of them in and then in half again. And basically what we're doing is we're just creating a really nice finished edge um, for our tie. And there we have it. Now I saw this cute method I want to show you um, that I saw online. And I don't know that it's necessarily practical for how short my ties are. But I want to show you what I saw online. So same thing here. I want to press it in half because I want to have that good middle piece. Then I'm going to start my folds. So I'm just going to do just like I just did. And I'm going to give just that end a press. Then what I saw somebody do is use a pin and for me it works because I'm on my pressing pad so I did a pin right there to start it right and then what I can do is do another pin just to make sure it's flowing right so it's right there on my pressing pad and then what they're saying is you just can kind of guide it and then you don't have to um, you don't have to do quite as much folding I'm not sure how practical this is because we've got such a short tail, but what happens is it's doing the fold for me. And I'm seeing this one's not quite folding as much as I would like it to. So, but I thought it would be kind of fun to 
try out a little little tactic that I saw online. I'm going to go back to just the basic way that I've done. Now there are tools out there that you can um, buy. I know um, going through the pandemic when everybody was short on elastic, I was having to do lots of bias ties. Um, and so there was all kinds of um, bias tape tools that you could buy to make your own. But we're just working on these short ties. So I think it's pretty easy just to do the fold. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and remember how we had we saved that finished edge from the shirt. So I don't need to worry about this end at all. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a seam straight up and we're going to do it as close to this edge as possible. Probably about an eighth inch seam. And then at the end, this is going to be ending up hooking onto our shirt. So we're not worried about that end being finished right now. So I'm going to hop over to the sewing machine and I'm going to do a straight stitch all along there. So I'll meet you over Do there. a little bit of a stitch. I'm going to do a back stitch. Now, while we're still here at the machine, I'm going to grab my apron. And what we're going to do is we're going to place these ties. So if I look at my apron, and I've got it laid out here, where we had that corner, so this is where the armpit came down, and this is where the side is coming back up. That's where our tie is going to be. And so what I want to do is I'm just going to grab a pin, and on the back side, I am just going to pin in my um, um, tie, and then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. And so what I like to do here is, because these ties are going to get pulled a lot, what I like to do is, I like to do a square here. And what I mean by a square, and hopefully um, I'll be able to zoom in on this for you guys, is I am going to put my presser foot down, okay? I'm going to sew, I'm going to sink my needle, I'm going to turn, I'm going to sew, the other direction, and so basically we're going to sew a square. Okay, so let's start out with a stitch and a back stitch. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm and I'm going slow, you guys, so I can really watch my machine. Okay, I'm sinking my needle. Okay, now I only raise my presser foot, and I'm going to turn up my material, my apron. I'm going to put my presser foot back down, and we're going to go. And then I'm going to sink my foot again. So I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around. And that way, I just feel like the tie gets um, reinforced just that much better. And then when I come back to that um, beginning, I'm going to do a back stitch. And as easy as that, we put our tie on. Okay. So our tie now, you can see, if you can see that kind of close up, I've got a square there. So let's do the second one. So we're back at the dressing table, and I just want to give you a little bit more close up view of that so you guys can see it. Now, you guys, I like to clip my threads as we go, so let's just go ahead and get those guys all clipped, and then, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a optional step, you guys. Right now, our apron could be done. We've got our ties on. We've got it all set. Now, there is a couple things that I want to show you that you might want to check on your apron. One thing I noticed when I cut my collar on this shirt is because of the material that um, this one is made with, these purple um, lines... Um, are kind of, um, this, they're really stringy right there. So what I would suggest you do is, because this is where we cut, is to run that over to the sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch all along there. You'll never see it because your collar is going to be turned like this, okay? But it will just save anything from raveling. So I would just go ahead and clip these type of um, threads that you've got there and then just do a quick zigzag stitch. Other than that, 
you're really ready to go with this cute apron. So we've got our ties all in um, and we're just set. What I like to do is I really like to add pockets to my apron. So that's what I'm going to do now. So again, this is totally an optional step. Um, I do like to give um, my um, bottom of my shirt again another press. And then you kind of want to decide where you are going to want to put your pockets. And what I do is, again, we're going to use the back of our shirt. So let's move that out of the way. Let's bring back in the back of the shirt. And I've still got some room on the back of this shirt. So um, lots of extra material there. Now, I have determined that I like to make a seven by seven. Um, I like to make a seven by seven um, pocket. And so let me grab my ruler again and let's see if you can take advantage again of your hem, take advantage of it. I can do that with one of my pockets, but I don't think, unless I want my pocket to be at a angle, which might kind of look kind of cool, I'm not going to be able to take advantage of it for both of them. So let's go ahead and I'll show you both ways. Okay, so there is my seven, and here is my seven. So I can kind of see where I need to, where I need to cut. So I'm going to cut my first one, and the nice thing about this first one is it's already hemmed for me. So on the second one that I'm going to have to do a hem on, I'm going to cut it just slightly a little bit bigger. Um, if you can get hem on both of them, take advantage of it. But in this case, I am going to have to roll that hem. So I'm just going to give it about a half inch extra. Um, and then this should be the same direction and the same width. And we are going to be set. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of pressing. And then we are going to, um, on this pocket, I need to finish off the top. So um, just like this pocket already has that hem, I'm going to use as the top of my pocket. So this guy, we're going to want to fold over just a tad bit to make it be the same. And then we'll, when we get over to the sewing machine, we'll add a top stitch um, to, um, to this pocket. So basically, my pockets are going to be exactly the same. So what I want to do before I get over to the sewing machine is I want to, to press in the sides because I want my pockets to be all nice and finished. So I'm just going to press in my sides and then we'll do a, um, we'll do this first top stitch on the pocket all by itself on this one pocket. All right, and then then I'm going to place my pockets right on my um, right on my apron, and we're we'll, going to sew it. So I'm going to hop really quick over to the sewing machine, and I'm just going to do this top stitch just to match this one, okay? And then I'll be right back, and we'll place them right on the apron. Okay, so I've got that top stitch all done, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and clip those threads really quick like. Just get those out of the way. Okay, and then what we're going to do is, let's put the iron off to the side, move my work area, clean it off a little bit, and let's bring back the apron. And now what I like to do, again, I'm very lucky because this shirt has got lines on it. So it's really going to help me line this all up. But what I really like my pockets down towards the bottom of my apron. So think about how you like yours. And I apologize, this one is a little hard to see. I need to fold in these edges though. I hadn't done... The, um, the one that has the hem. So let's get those pressed into place. 
because then what we want to do is we're going to place our pocket and we're going to pin it in place so that when we carry it over to the sewing machine um, it is going to be right where we want it to be and you guys this is the last step on this apron so can't wait to put these pockets on and then put it on and show you guys how cute this project is now let's talk about the placement again I have got lines you guys it really really helps and I might even want to be so particular that they match up so close um, what I like to do is place one pocket okay so I'm gonna get this pocket where I want it and I'm gonna add um, a couple pins so it won't move on me just gonna pin those in place oops I think I'm gonna grab me a couple more pins out here and I like to pin right at the the corners of the pockets so I know exactly how I want those placed now what I like to do just so it looks nice and you guys don't need to do this step but I then like to take my ruler and I determine that I am one and a quarter inches away you probably could eyeball this but I had just found that if I use that ruler it really helps so I want to be one and a quarter inches away which is exactly there and I am going across if I have any little threads you want to get rid of those okay and I am going to cover up that line there and I think we're set so I'm going to grab four more pins and we're going to pin this guy in place and then when we go over to the sewing machine what we're going to do is we are going to sew three sides of this pocket we've already finished off the top of the pocket right so it's got a nice finish to it right um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the sewing machine and we're going to start and we're going to sew and then we're going to back stitch we're going to go around we are going to sink our needle just like i showed you earlier we're going to turn the corner go here sink our needle turn the corner and then we're going to do a back stitch here do it on both pockets so let's hop over to the sewing machine and we will get this now um, i'm seeing a couple threads that i didn't clip so let's get rid of those really quick like and let's hop over the sewing machine and finish up this project okay so we're back at the sewing machine and i am going to use my um, eighth inch mark on my foot to do this and so I'm going to put my foot down and again I'm going to start my stitch okay and I'm going to go back because I want to make sure I've got a secure stitch and then I am just going to follow right along with my pocket on the um, marking on my foot so we're going to go along and go slow you guys there's no reason why you need to do this fast you want a nice seam going down your pocket and then when I get close to that pin I'm gonna go ahead and remove the pin and then remember what we talked about I'm gonna sink that needle so my needle is facing down right now I'm gonna raise my foot and I'm gonna move my apron this way and then I'm gonna put my foot back down. I'm on that same measurement and I'm gonna go along. Okay, when I get close to my pin, I'm gonna remove it. I'm holding that pocket in place with my finger. Okay, and then we're gonna come up here. Same thing here, you guys, go slow. If you miss, sinking your needle which I just did there I'm just gonna back stitch once okay I'm gonna raise my foot and I'm gonna bring my apron around and then I'm gonna sink my foot make sure you guys when you're doing this that you don't get other material like this isn't shoved under there 
um, because otherwise you're going to sew um, sew your apron <laughs> together, not how you want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and just go down and slowly do this again. And when I get up to the top, I'm going to remove that needle again. And when I get up to the top here, again, I'm going to just get to the edge and then I'm going to back stitch. Secure that needle. And then I'm going to, for my machine, I have look dot cutter. I'm going to cut my seam. Okay. And then I have got my pocket all the way sewn in. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Now I always like to start um, at the top and that way it's just one continuous sew all the way around. In this case, Lisa, you're going to take your pin out first. Okay. While I'm here at the machine, what I want to show you is what I was talking about on that collar, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and drop this right um, where the, that neckline is, where that open is, and I have got a zigzag stitch on my machine, and I am just going to go across and just close off that. That way that will just ensure that I don't have any loose threads. Um, out and about. So all I did is just do that close stitch right along there. Okay, so we've got a completed apron. Let's go try it on. Okay, you guys, and here is that cute apron that we just made. So I just love the pockets. Like I said, the pockets are totally optional, you guys, but there's just something about um, pockets that I just love. I love how the collar is. See how that cut is we did? You guys could definitely adjust the ties if you want. My tie is not really long in the back, but I just absolutely love it. And then the other thing that I like, you guys, is I had commented to you um, that I was going to make a few of these and then I was just going to have them here in the craft room. So when friends come over to craft, guess what? I have them right here at the door. So thanks for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. I hope you like this project, upcycling a men's shirt into an apron. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And thanks again for joining me for another Inspiration Friday. Don't forget to check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for other DIY type projects.